Tervea hyvää päivää, this is Mika Tokola and I'm just starting to play Blobnet in Lynx. Oh, this is so fun. And by just starting to play, I mean I've been playing this level for half an hour without any sort of success. Ah! I actually once got all the chips and still had three seconds left over my previous time, but then a Guess what happened? A blob! Yes, of course, a blob happened. Why? Why did he decide to happen right then? I collected all the chips and was by the socket and this blob just comes around. Hey, hi, chip. Wanna give me a hug? Yeah, definitely. <sighs> but that's blobs. That's in their nature. You, you, you have to forgive them. They, don't, they can't help it. A little bit like dogs or chickens. I don't know. Ah, oh, you can't blame them. Unlike teeth, teeth work in planned fashion. Blobs just don't know better. Here we go. I'm not. I don't think I've taken enough shortcuts to actually score any better than. So I should start taking risks, but at the, taking risks at this point in the level doesn't feel right. Two seconds better than before. Wow! I hope I didn't say anything really stupid there. <laughs> and so we go on to the next level. This is level 24 of Chips Challenge, and I'm watching the replay, and it's basically the same route. It's exactly the same route, I think, as was. Yeah, it's transferred on the score board. The weighting on the gliders is a bit different, I think, but not different enough to be totally new. This must have been a wonderful level to optimize originally. <laughs> I can't imagine the work. First get these gliders to press the toggle buttons and then go around the level. And there's even one point where you bring a block into uh, one of the side rooms to interfere with the glider there. Just an incredible testament to how people have learned to play this game. Now I know I've optimized some levels, but I'm not sure I could have scored 425 on this level by myself. Definitely not back when um, I scored it, because uh, I, I think the uh, videos of the best routes are very useful in getting more players uh, to play competitively and, and um, to learn how to optimize levels. Of course, um, you don't want to share all your secrets all the time, but it's good that we have a pretty good library of um, best solutions. And that's one of the reasons I'm releasing all these uh, videos from CC1, because the MS solutions already have been released, so it's not like there's any good, good reason for these not to be released. Oh, and another pretty long level that's exactly the same as in MS. And by pretty long, I mean that's like three minutes. So maybe now is a good time to talk about some of the Lynx mechanics and actually playing in Lynx. Oh, oh, first, I forgot to mention in the first video, I apologize for the sound 
um, quality. I, I had a perfect sound quality earlier when I was recording one thing, and now I realize there's a humming sound here, there's some kind of uh, thing going on with my recording software, I don't know. I tried to fix it, and I couldn't, and I figured it's better just to get this video done than to not do it. Um, so, the sound is what it is. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, links, movement. Uh, if you've read, no, okay, let me get it, take a step back. I was going to say if you've read the documentation, the help file, but um, let me take a step back. I, I used to play some Minesweeper back in the day, and um, back in the day means like when I was 15 in 1996, and I, I, I wasn't a hardcore Minesweeper fan. I was just like, played it sometimes because it was on every computer, and someone asked me, watching over my shoulder that what are those flags on the map and I told him well they're flags you can mark mines with the right hand button on the mouse and they didn't know this and they had also played some Minesweeper and they just hadn't re read the help file and in the help file it tells you the instructions to how to play the game including how to mark flags and uh, it's its own chapter if marking flags in Minesweeper is actually helpful or not, but um, it, it, it kind of is, yeah. But some people are really fast even without flags. Anyway, the point was they hadn't read the help file. And the same thing in any game you start playing seriously, you should always read the documentation. And one of the documentations for Chip's Challenge is the tile world documentation on links mode and therein is contained a little thing I don't think everyone has noticed it's about the movement of links uh, let's start with block slapping unlike MS where uh, chip always has one direction he's moving in links mode you can press two directions and uh, the game will uh, record both. Uh, one will be a primary direction and the second will be a uh, secondary direction. And I don't think you can push in two different directions. Uh, it, well, I, probably you can, but it doesn't have any effect. So why would you want to do this? Well, the first reason is block slapping. Uh, when you move in one direction, your primary direction, um, and then you move next to a block and you have also pressed another direction so say you're going up and you also keep your left button pressed um, and then you go by a block on your left and the block will be slapped to the left and you can do this by continuous presses oh I pressed one thing uh, so you just keep the up button down on the up key and the left key down or you can just when you're by the block just hit the left key once it, it's a matter of technique to know when to hit it uh, so that's the main reason you would want to use the secondary direction in links now actually I use it a lot more in corridors and anytime you want to um, avoid bumping into walls like stripes is a very good example of this but that's like way down in the set so I won't be able to demonstrate that right now but when you're going through a corridor with um, corners like or, or any kind of corners just where you <laughs> come upon a wall and you're supposed to turn once the primary direction is no longer available the game will automatically make you move in your secondary direction and then the primary direction becomes the secondary one now I've said this it's much simpler than what I make it out to sound I'm just um, probably tired from playing Blobnet <laughs> and speaking whatever but um, the idea is that playing that way pressing the keys in that manner you don't lose any time on 
uh, this kind of turns in corridors and usually it's uh, not that easy to um, do if you just press them alternatingly you you almost certainly will lose a few tenths of time I'd be interested in knowing if you some of the people have been playing like this too that they press two keys at the same time uh, I do it all the time and it really helps in not losing any time in links now sorry for speaking out technical things like this while there was an interesting level there ping pong it's the second level where I don't have the bold time and I just noticed that uh, Ben Hornlitz was the first one to report a time of 235 and my time was 234 and uh, someone had already um, confirmed that time or else the scoreboard is incorrect and that's pretty good and I, I haven't been able to find that last second so maybe if you, someone wants to help me that would be great or else I'll have to spend like five minutes finding it <laughs> I wish it was five minutes yeah I don't know okay so we're on to Arctic flow no, level 29 and this is marked as adapted in on the scoreboard um, I think it's yeah this level has a lot of stuff that's changed from the MS route but still it's adapted hmm. who cares <laughs> well anyway the point is it's it's almost the same as there's not much different. The level concept is pretty neat. And in MS it's uh, technically busted because you can go back through the ice slide and just boost backwards on the fourth floor. But of course the time it takes is not as much as... I mean it's more than... Um, this way that I did in links. And here, let's just look at the time. It's pretty tight. As I come on to this tile here, it's already 2.86 the time. So this is the closest time you can have with still scoring 2.86. So you can't lose any time anywhere on So it's a really strict bolt. And here we have Mishmash. Best level in existence, right? Yeah, maybe not. I think this was one of the first levels <laughs> I optimized in Lynx, because otherwise <laughs> I probably would never have gone back to <laughs> do it. Well, it is a timed level, so there's that going for it. Um, untimed levels like this. There's no reason to work on them, but still, people do. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Blue wall mazes. Generally, I don't like them, but um, I understand that um, people still make them. <laughs> and uh, my my theory is that uh, everyone should be entitled to make one blue wall maze in their life, and then after that they should be done maybe two two at the max and don't do any more blue wall mazes if I see a third blue wall maze from one designer I'm not gonna play it simple as that mazes are really hard to do correctly it's um, actually that'd be a cool thing to talk about for me though maybe no one else will care but like I really like mazes, like the topology of mazes. Uh, it's very interesting to see how a maze has been set up, which ways you can go, if there are any loops, if there are uh, any shortcuts, um, which way you have dead ends, how do you trick the player, and with invisible wall mazes where you have, um, you still do everything um, orthogonal, what's the word? Well, 
if you, if you do them really uh, according to some um, uh, really strict plan, or if you um, make the maze so that it's um, like there's more diagonal <laughs> diagonal uh, walls when it's harder to tell which tiles probably are um, walls and which aren't. Yeah, I <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. Hopefully, you're laughing at me. I'm with me. <laughs> this is great. I should do this a lot more. And here we have not. And we do not have any boosting on this level, so the bold is much less than in MS. And I think I'm gonna finish off with this level on a high note. It's just okay. So there's a whole extra move here. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and tune in next time as we tackle Scavenger Hunt. Goodbye.